I was watching a TED talk and it was um, Eben Bayer starting to discuss the exciting new opportunities of mycelium within the packaging industry. Eventually, I just thought, I'm gonna send an email. And I found Biome about four years ago and we just sparked up a conversation. So we're here today to visit Biome. We're gonna meet the team and discuss the Hayes Pavilion project that will be at Glastonbury Festival. Biome is a multi-award winning research and development led company. We are driven by a very simple philosophy to allow nature to lead innovation and only have a positive or regenerative impact on everything that we touch. Here at Biome, my work revolves around utilising mushrooms and fungi as a biomaterial, so how we can use the skills they have out in the wild and bring them into the lab to form products. We've been looking at set design, stage design and temporary structures for quite a while here at Bio and we've been recognising how the industry needs a very quick turnaround and the materials that are being used can sometimes be quite toxic. So when Temple approached us to discuss the use of our mycelium product into the Hayes Pavilion at Glastonbury, it just became a no-brainer. I've been working making sets for somewhere in the regions of 20 years, sculpting, polystyrene, working in workshops, doing fiberglassing, and the material presence there was always really impactful on people's health. Ultimately, you know, a lot of these products go to waste and then, and then that affects the environment in turn. Under the ground in every forest, holding all of the topsoil together, is the root structure of fungi known as mycelium. When grown within a confined space, it branches out into these really intricate networks, and those networks create air pockets that provide incredible insulating properties. They're also hydrophobic, which means that they can resist moisture into the material and also have a natural fire resistance property, driven by how the organism has evolved over billions of years. The beginning of the process starts with your little culture of the mushroom, so this could be one that you've taken from the wild. You've then grown it on a plate. Then once you've established that you're looking at the right mushroom, stick it in with this grain. The mushroom then uses that nutrition source and once you've bulked it up there, you can mix it with your hemp shiv here. You stick that into the mold or the shape that you want to fit it in. You then stick it into the incubation room for two weeks and out pops your product at the end, uh, which is a wet panel. Stick it in the dehydrator to remove all the water um, and you're left with a pretty lightweight uh, panel product at the end. So this panel here is made out of mycelium and hemp. Particularly, it's made out of the waste streams produced by the CBD industry. It's ready to be used in industry as an insulation panel. The next two days, we're doing an R&D workshop, testing for the first time sculpting with mycelium to replace polystyrene. I've been invited along as a sculptor and professional maker and educator to explore the possibilities of the material and what we can and can't do with it. So I'm making a biodegradable adhesive. Um, so we're working with mycelium, which is a biodegradable material, and we're trying to figure out how to basically attach it to itself. It's really cool to be here today with all these different artists and designers and, and builders, makers. Everyone's collaborating a lot, which has been great been a learning curve of how it would work in a structural way but I think that's part of what today is about so it can be built to withstand all the Glastonbury extremity. Some of the challenges that we are facing with the material is material density and consistency with the panels. The next couple of days will kind of really inform how we move through that. It's really exciting we're all on a level playing field because as a material we've never worked with it in this way before. Team love interested in projects like this because we've always tried to be very conscious about what we can do to do better. We're trying to look at a new material and how that could disrupt the materials we have existing in our industry already. After Glastonbury, we're writing a report. The report is there for the creative industries to give all the findings from our projects to say, if you want to use this material in the future, 
read this and you'll see all the things we learn about it. My involvement in this project is to be the data gatherer with the goal of being able to understand the environmental and the social impact of basically using natural materials for creative builds, but specifically in a festival setting. Our aim for Glastonbury is to show our product in a new form, things that the general public interact with on a regular basis. But most importantly, we would like to use this as an opportunity to change the way that we think about products and materials. It's only an example of what we could be doing if we think more in the way that nature does. Seeing the pavilion for the first time it took my breath away. Exciting to see it in its in total kind of form. Yeah, almost an emotional thing to see it um, in real life. Very rewarding seeing people's reactions and seeing how excited people got about it. The materials and the products that we create are just a manifestation of a bigger philosophy and a bigger aim to provoke certain questions within people. Why aren't our buildings made of mushrooms? Why aren't our cities built in tune with nature? We've got huge problems in the world about using concrete and other materials. We can develop something new, that's, that's incredible. So I think it's a great way to, to get people to start understanding what you could do with mycelium. I'm wondering if we can build houses out of it. There's so many questions. It made me think about this, this tension through the construction industry. So all buildings should be made to last hundreds of years, extremely robust materials. Should we be building buildings out of, well, paper, or in this case, a material which in itself is degradable, reusable? I think aesthetically we've achieved a huge success. I think it's very visually appealing. And also practically, I've, I think that we've seen that these biodegradable materials can be used to make something that is structurally sound. We're in a climate crisis. We have a limited amount of time before we hit an irreversible feedback loop. Which sounds all doom and gloom, but like there's so many creative solutions um, that are creating hope and inspiration. And this is one of those. Well, we need to have a shift really in how we see products in their lifetime. So that's when we'll start seeing kind of the importance of degradable products. Once we get governments on board, more groups, more companies producing, then you'll start to see the shift. The glorious utopia would be that we could use waste directly from festivals to be able to make mycelium panels that then can be reused at the festival and that would make it a complete circular process. It would be great to position the product into many different creative markets. I would love to encourage the industries that I've worked across within theatre, film, events to start picking up and using the material. If you have to spend a bit more time and a bit more money on something, maybe it's worth it if the end goal is actually sustainability of life on planet Earth. I'm really hoping that the report will show that festivals can be a really strong force for good because festivals are like micro cities so you can really test new technologies then you can scale it up back into society. As a kid looking at the change you can make in the world um, I've never thought that mushrooms could get us this far and it's fantastic seeing science actually having a difference in the world. When we first started, not even five years ago, we were being laughed at. We were seen as a, just a bunch of hippies playing with mushrooms and hemp. There is a hidden genius in nature that we need to shed much more light on. We discovered some of our mycelium strains are able to actually consume and break down plastic in a very efficient manner. We rendered polystyrene unrecognizable as a plastic within only 28 days. Our hope is to demonstrate how we can seamlessly integrate these radical natural biotechnologies into what we do on a daily basis. And I think there's something to be said about going back to learning from these ancient and indigenous cultures in order to address all of the challenges that, that we're facing today. Mycelium is the network that connects the entire forest. Festivals are so community oriented and you just, you can feel it in the air when you're here how connected people are. And I think this project emphasizes the connectedness between not just people, but people with nature as well.